Good everyone, my name is Graphics. In this video, we want to solve a problem, and the question goes like this it says, Two forces of magnitude 250 Newton and 150 Newton are acting at a point. If the angle between the forces is 60 degree, determine the magnitude of the resultant force and also determine the angle. Now let us write out the parameters that we have in the question. We have two forces. Let us represent those forces by using P and Q. So let's say P is for the first force and that's given us 250 Newton. And Q is for the second force, giving us 150 Newton. And the angle between these two forces will be giving us what? Theta, and that's giving us what? 60 degree. This is what we have in the question. And we are told to look for the angles, look for the direction, or we can say the sense. So one of the directions is giving us what? Alpha, and the other is giving us what? Beta. Now, the alpha can be any. It can either use gamma, whatever you want to use as far as representing the angle. Now, to give you a better understanding, let us table out the diagram. Let's say this is the point that the force are acting. Let's say the first force, P, is acting horizontally on this point. Right? And it's giving us what? 250 Newton and Q is acting at an angle of 60 degree with the first force P right so let's say this is Q at an angle with force of what 150 Newton with the angle of 60 degree and the point that I'm meeting let's call that point point O now, if I allow or if I make these two forces be represented by the two other sides of the parallelogram, this is what we are going to be having. This is the parallelogram here. Now, what do you notice? This force you see is parallel to what? To P. So we also call it force P. That force is also given as what? 200 and what? 15 Newton. This other force here is parallel to what? To Q. And we also call that same force 150 Newton, right? And if I extend the air a little bit, the angle between this force here and this line here is given as what? 60 degree. It's also called theta. I will call it with the principle of what? We say they are corresponding, the angle, we call it corresponding angle. So whatever is here will be here, right? Now, if I apply sum of angle on a straight line, which is giving us equals to 180, so we're saying that 60 minus 180, that means the remaining angle between here will be what? Angle 120 degree. You can see that? So that means from here, I can actually bring out this shape out, just like what you can see here right and this will be alpha this will be beta and the angle between them will be what 120 degree so we know this is also p and this is also what q now you see what i've just done this is a triangle this is a, this is a triangle and this is what a parallelogram now if i'm applying the principle of cosine rule here which says that the resultant force that is arrow square that is the cosine rule arrow square is equals to what um p square plus q square minus 2pq cos theta right that is when you have two sides and the included angle the two sides are given as p and q and the included angle is given as what 120 degree but if i stick with my parallelogram here i will not make use i'll be using the resultant force will be equal to what? The square root of what? P square plus Q square plus 2PQ 
cos theta. You can see the difference. One of them has a negative, the other has a positive. Is that the key? Now, if you look this closely, in this case of parallelogram, I'll be sticking with the 60 degree as my theta. Right, the cosine rule here, I'll be sticking with my 120 degree. Whatever principle I take, I will arrive at the same answer. So let us solve this and see. And you find this very interesting. Now, the resultant force for a parallelogram is given to be this. Right? I will know the value of P, Q, and theta here. So the P here is given as 250. So since it's P square, we're having 250 square. The Q here is given as 150. Since it is square, we have 150 square. Plus 2 into bracket 250 times 150 cos 60 degree why in that of the triangle we'll be having the resultant force to be what just the same thing but the difference is just that the theta here will be given as what 120 so we'll be having the resultant force will be giving us the square root of 250 square plus 150 square minus 2 into bracket 250 times 150 cos 120 degree now if i impute this if i move forward here my arrow square can be given as r is equals to the square root of 250 square is given as 62500 2500 plus 150 square is giving us 22,500 plus 2 times 250 times 150 giving us 75,000 into bracket cos 120 is giving us what? Minus 0 0.5. Right? And if I continue, this will now be giving us the square root of 62,500 plus 22,500 will give us 85,000 plus 72,000 as in minus. 70,500 times 0 point, minus 0 0.5 will give us minus 7,500. And when you multiply the negative here times the negative, you'll have positive. So we're having plus 7,500, right? Now when you add 85,000 plus 7,500, we'll be having 122,500. That will be having. So we're looking for the square root of 122,500. And this will be given as what? 350 Newton. Now, if you do the same thing for that of um, the parallelogram, if you put the same formula, you discover that we'll be arriving at the same answer. We'll be doing what? Arriving at the same answer. Let's see. The resultant force here will be given us. We know 250 squared is given as what? 2,500. Plus, we know 22,500 will be given as what? As in 150 square, given as what? 22,500. Plus, we know 2 times 250 times 150 to give us 25,000. And cos 60 is given as what? 0 0.5. Now, when you apply this, you discover that 2,500 plus 22,500 will be given as what? 85,000. Plus, 75,000 times 0 0.5 will give us what? That's 7,500. When you add both of them, you'll be having the square root of 122,500. And the square root of 122,500 will give us what? 350 Newton. You can see we have the same answer. So, in either way you follow, you'll be having the same value. Now, the next thing is we should look for what? The angles, right? Now, in terms of parallelogram law, we say that tan alpha is equal to what? Q sine theta divided by P plus Q cos theta. Right? That is to look for the angle when you are using the law of what parallelogram here. Now, when you put your value, we know what Q is. Q is giving us um, 150. We know what theta is. Theta is giving us what? 60. And we know what P is. P is giving us 250. When you put your value, we have in tan alpha will be giving us 150 sine 60 divided by 250 plus 150 cos 60. On the long run, we'll now be having 150 sine 60 is giving us 129.90 divided by 
250 plus 150 cos 60 giving us what? 3, 2, 5. Because 150 cos 60 is 75. So when you add 75 plus 250, we have in 3 to 5. So we now see that tan alpha will be giving us 0 0.3996. When you divide 129.90 divided by what? Divided by 3 to 5. So when you look for alpha, alpha will now give us the tan inverse of 0 0.3996. And our alpha will be giving us 21.781 degree. That's our alpha. And if you want to get beta, beta will give us what? Um, 60, that is the angle theta minus alpha, right? So from our angle here, because we look at the diagram here, the resultant force is this, and we know the angle between both of them is giving us theta, right? And the um, alpha here, we calculated it, that what we are calculating for, we got it to be 21.781. Then to get the beta, we need to subtract the theta from the alpha to get the beta. That's what we are doing here. And that will give us what? 38.218 degree. That is how you calculate for your alpha, your beta. And if you now do the same thing in your triangle here, right? We'll be using what is called the sine rule. You can apply the sine rule here. Let's see. And the sine rule says that um, the resultant force, which is the diagonal of this force you're seeing here, right? Is given as... Um, is divided by sine of 120. That is divided by the sine of the angle opposite it this is the angle the angle opposite is what 120 equals to p all over what sine beta equals to q all over what sine alpha right so that is what we have is that taken now if you input your formula here our r is 350 divided by sine 120 which is given as what 0 0.866 equals to q is 150 divided by what sine alpha so if i make sine alpha this is the formula my sine alpha will now be equals to what 150 times 0 0.866 divided by 350 so my sine alpha will give me 129.90 divided by 350 and that will be given as what 0 0.3711 degree so when you look for the angle the alpha alpha will now be given as what sine inverse 0.3711 degree and that will give us 21.7834 degrees you can see it's the same as what we have when we apply it in the other aspect you can see with my arrow now similarly if i want to look for beta i'm going to use the same arrow over that resultant force over sine 120 is equals to what beta over sine is equals to p over sine beta now when you now write it out R, which is resultant force divided by sine 120 will be equals to what p all over what sine beta now we've taken these two out of that equation there now what is the resultant force r here we calculated to be what 350 divided by sine 120 which is given as 0 0.866 which is equals to the p here if you look at our p is given as 250 divided by what sine beta now, if you make beta, sine beta, this is the formula, we'll be having 250 times 0 0.866 divided by what? 350, right? And my sine beta will now be equal to 0 0.6186. Now, if you make beta, this is the formula, beta will now be equal to what? Sine inverse 0 0.6186, which is equal to what? 38.21 degree now you can see that what we've done so far we will actually be doing the virtually we are actually be doing the same thing right whether you are using the parallelogram law or you are using the triangular law if you follow the normal principle and procedure you actually get the same answer so you should not get confused is that taking one thing is when you are trained when you are using the parallelogram law one of the forces must be horizontal Either the P should be horizontal or the Q should be horizontal. One of them must be what? Horizontal. That is one of the criteria to apply the principle of what? The parallelogram law. And also, if you want to learn how to prove the formula of the parallelogram law, you can click on this link at the top right corner of the screen. You will see a video that will teach you on how to prove the law of what? Parallelogram. So, if you have found this video helpful, Please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the video.
Thanks for watching.